I feel like we can never talk enough about memberships, whether we're on the air or off the air. We're always talking about our strategies with our memberships. So tonight we just decided to hit that record button and have a, have a cozy conversation about it. My gosh, uh, the relationship is great. You know, you're supporting your clients. They're supporting you. It means that you know how much money is coming in throughout the year and it really can add a lot of security. So again, that uh, membership talk, it just um, never never feels completely full or like we've com- we're completely done talking about it. So again, join us on this, this cozy episode talking about memberships. Of course, I want to mention Helmbot before we get started. Helmbot was making you know software for float tanks at the very beginning. But it's so versatile at this point. What it can do for you, I mean, whether it's a massage, acupuncture, a therapist, um, it can easily handle that, but it can also handle classes as well. So whatever you have going on, you can make sure that you're able to book multiple clients for a yoga session, pay out employees, pay out your teachers who may be employees or contractors. It's versatile like that. It can do everything you need at this point, and I am absolutely impressed by it. I love it. And um, as I always say, don't take my word for it. Go get a free tour. Have have them jump on a, a Zoom call and walk you through everything. Ask all the questions. Get to that nitty, nitty gritty. They know it. Uh, and, and they'll be able to make sure that it's a good fit for you. So you can do your research. Again, helmbot.com is where you want to go to check them out. Also, a big old thanks to Isopod. As I've said before, we love our Isopod float tanks. I was working a shift just this last weekend and giving a tour of our one of our Isopod float tanks. Somebody was just like, oh, thank goodness. It's like, yep, uh, it's, it's way more spacious than people expect. She was worried about it looking like a coffin. No... <laughs> that's nowhere near your nose. It's very spacious. You can reach up and not touch the ceiling. You can bounce side to side, up and down. It's it's way more spacious than people think. And uh, I never used the coffin word at the shop, but if somebody else brings it up, I have no problem talking about the fact that it is nothing like a coffin. Uh, It is way more spacious and friendly, which everybody breathes a sigh of relief when they see when it's their first time floating. But the great thing is, it's not just super friendly from the outside, it's also built like an absolute beast of a machine on the back end, so everything is stainless steel parts, it's all built to last. When a part does go out, they ship things so quickly quickly to me I don't even it doesn't even make sense the fact that they're over in Europe and they're shipping out to the west coast here so quickly Sandra and I sometimes are dumbfounded by how quickly parts get to us but um, it means that we have very little downtime and that's what I love about my float tank their uptime is up as much as possible so uh, that really supports us and what we're trying to do here again i-sopod.com let's go ahead and start the show back to another episode of Art of the Float, where float centers thrive. My name is Dylan, and we're doing a bit of a cozy pod tonight. Tonight is just a really cozy discussion about memberships, and you know what? Let's let's uh, forget the bits. We usually open with a with a question, and I just kind of want to get into it and start a little little fireside chat tonight. Um, I can't do it, Drew. I can't do it. Can't look, oh, I was man, getting I cozy. Bring my hoodie. Darn it. I was getting cozy with Drew there, and I just couldn't can't do it. I disappear well. into my hoodie. <laughs> My Burnside Brewing whiskey. That's how I'll stay cozy and warm tonight. There you go. Um, so, COVID. Uh, how do I say this? In non inappropriately, kicked us in the proverbial. Um, <laughs> it, it it really took one out from us. Uh, we we dropped our number of memberships basically in half through COVID, um, and I've been noticing that lately. I've been noticing. Um, not just the count numbers, but the revenue difference uh, because of it. And we're on a very good upswing. But what I've realized is it's from people coming in and, and paying for full price floats. I don't mind that, right? Like a full price float is, is like, if every float was that way, that'd be fantastic if we were booked 100%. But the the fact is, I know from the past that memberships are really good for, um, well, during the summertime, like it used to be tourists would come into Portland and be like, oh, floating, cool, I'm going to do that while I'm here. Well, now floating is ubiquitous anywhere around the country, anywhere around Canada, you can find a float center. And so we have finally found ourselves to the place where a lot of other float centers have found themselves, which which is uh, not a lot of people coming in during the summer. And Portlanders are out, they're going kayaking, they're, they're doing their outdoor adventures. 
and I want I want that buffer. It's a really nice safety net to have those um, those float numbers uh, that go year round. And I'm I want to talk to you guys tonight about. Um, what you think about float memberships. I know, Drew, we've had this conversation in the past. I'm curious where you're at now. And I also want to talk about what your, how you set a goal for your memberships. Um, and I'm curious how you then drive to get those numbers. So um, <laughs> I'll I kick it off. I have a question first, though. Oh, oh, oh. Seasonality. My seasons are totally different than yours. Oh, funny. Um, okay. And so I think maybe that's a regional thing, but like summertime, we're usually still pretty booked. Um, we are in a slow period right now in the spring. Um, and then okay. typically in October is when we crash again. But, and I think ours is more because we have such distinct seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like right at the season change. And I noticed this when I used to teach yoga too, that during the season change, people aren't going to do all of that kind of stuff as much. Either they're hibernating or they're getting outside, you know, and it's one of those two kind of extremes. So right now is kind of slow for us. Um, But then it'll pick back up in like summertime. We're good. We're funny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, that's a, that's a great point is that depending on where you're at, Mm -hmm. the, the, the wave of of business can look really different. Yeah. Except Uh, my salt cave. (laughs) It's, yeah, is it it's year weird. round? No, the salt cave stays busier in the winter, oh, okay. but it's slower in the summer and spring. And spring is the prime time for halo therapy. Like we are in one of the the allergen capitals of the world, and it would make so much sense for people to be coming in to see us like weekly right now. I mean, that's I need halo therapy weekly because they're so bad here. And, and are you telling that in your reason, story? I'm telling it my story. I remember okay. what Reba, ta- Reba said last <laughs> week, but okay. I'm telling you know people like this is the time of year and it's wild because all four years we've seen a dip. Um, our salt cave kind of dies off in spring and summer, mm. um, but our floats stay full. So uh, for summer at least. How about for you, Drew? Um, yeah, I, there's definitely a slower time period, obviously for the summertime, but um Definitely, as you know, I still the floats still come in, but there's definitely that. I mean, I just experienced it. I had uh, a nice day this week for cancellations, right? Last minute, nice days come out. People don't want to float. Rainy days, bad weather. Um, I think that's an advantage to being in the Northeast. To be honest, it's hmm. the weather is like not that good nine <laughs> months out of the year. You know, so um indoor activities yeah it helps mm-hmm. right um, it it presents a different challenge from being in uh las vegas or florida sure, right. right so um but for the memberships and i would say i my memberships do decline i have already had a couple people um mm-hmm. who they shut it down for the summer they go do their thing for the summer you it's basically 12 weeks from june to september and then they come back in the fall. There's definitely a you know a little dip like that. But um, yeah, I'm on team memberships. Memberships are important. It took me a while to get there. Um, I don't push the memberships. Hmm. You know, I'm, I don't campaign for it. Um, I actually, I'm trying to do a better job. I finally, um, maybe a, a couple months ago, made a little like postcard type uh, rack card that I have on my front desk that just is about the memberships and the benefits. Mm. It's its own thing. So if anyone ever asks slash, if someone, if I notice someone pays for two floats, maybe three floats, I'll say, Hey, just a heads up, making sure you know about the membership, but I definitely don't do a good enough job of pushing that. And now that my floats is $75 a float, eh, you know, I don't mind. I don't have to like do a sale on the memberships or anything like that. But um, yeah, I like memberships. So, what, what changed your mind about memberships? Like what was, cause you said you, you finally got on board with the membership. So what was the click for you? COVID it was COVID and it was the members oh. who s- continued to support me while mm-hmm. I was closed down. And, um, they were the ones that felt the most comfortable about coming back immediately. Mm-hmm. Even while I was shut down, I was getting the emails. Hey, I, I know you keep it clean, Drew. Well, look, come on, let me in, you know? <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a big, a big change. I, and of course my co-hosts who 
slowly but surely kept reinforcing the <laughs> benefits. But I do see I, I I should look into it a little more. But I think there's someone in the DC area that doesn't do memberships, and I, I think maybe sometime we could bring them on. Um, but hmm. yeah, I like the people who come back. The people mm-hmm. who are typically my members who are floating a lot, I like. I like to be around them. They're cool people. Um, those are the ones that are easy. I joke that mm. someone who's new comes in and it looks like a tornado went off in the room. And then someone who's <laughs> yes. a member comes in and they won't even use the big towel. And I'll be like, did they get in? I'm looking for salt. Ah. And I'm like <laughs> inspecting it, trying to make sure they actually floated. But they just have their routine down. They do their yeah. thing. They get in. They get out. And they're super, nice, yeah. generally, they're super easy mm-hmm. to deal with. So I enjoy those people. I give them a, a discount to float. It's a win-win. And yeah. mm-hmm. um, and there's consistency to that. And you get to know those people. You see them more often. And when there's a pandemic and you shut down, they like you and they say, hey, I, I only have so many dollars, but I want to support you because I like you. And I want, I want your business mm-hmm. to survive. So those were my people. And so I appreciate the members, team membership. Yay. Cool, cool. Yeah. I'm curious, do you guys track like what percentage of your appointments are membership versus either first timers or returns? Of our visitors? Mm-hmm. It's in look, home, so I'm sure it's yeah. tracked. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm definitely. sure Helm's recording it. Helm.com. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Helm um, definitely so has it, mine, right? Our visits are about 50% um, members versus first timers or re, uh, return guests. And wow. so that's, you know, I mean, that's pretty, pretty big um, yeah. for actual appointments. So for the most part, our members are actually coming in. Um, you know, we do still have some members who haven't come back after COVID, like after the shutdown. Sure. So we were only shut down for, you know, six, I think six weeks. And uh, they, kept their memberships going and just haven't been back. And we've been oh. trying to, you know, reach them and like, Hey, waiting for that credit card to expire. <laughs> like it's an interesting thing, but they're still supporting us. And we've sent huh. emails and um, tried calling folks and they're fine. Just letting it roll. Um, like, okay. Yeah. What a mensch. What, what <laughs> mensch is. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing, but um, <laughs> we lost, you know, Dylan, you were saying earlier that you, you definitely felt that, um, a huge loss after COVID. Um, we had some, but I feel like our trends have been pretty consistent with, okay. you know, just what has happened in general. Um, I do see that, you know, having new team members does have an impact and we expect that fully that, you know, people are just kind of getting comfortable with having the conversations about, um, selling upgrades or selling memberships um, and, you know, getting them really comfortable and confident in how they're saying it, what they're saying and inviting people to come back in, you know, that, that for a lot of people it just feels like an uncomfortable conversation until they get those skills really honed. Yeah. Kim, that's definitely something that I think mm-hmm. um, is important to remember that you don't always talk about the membership. I know a lot of float centers that don't always talk about the membership mm-hmm. and trying to work that into a conversation without sounding too salesy is, Mm -hmm. um, is it's a whole skill set. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard and it can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's always been a little bit of an issue for me. And, and that's been something that I feel like we had a really good rhythm of with our employees of how to talk about memberships and how to make sure that you want to make sure that somebody who comes in knows about the best way that they can float or the most affordable way that they can float. But, um, I have noticed that has fallen by the wayside and we have clients. I'll I'll be in the other room or I'll be, you know, taking care of some maintenance or whatever. And I'll, I'll hear, and I'm like, wait, somebody just floated for the first time and had a great experience and didn't get told about the membership or like the starter pack. Like, ha 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 ha. Um, it it has to be kind of baked into training of of Mm -hmm. how we do things. It's, it's a whole art to itself for sure. That, that I obviously haven't mastered. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I actually <laughs> had that printed up because I can just hand yeah, it right? to somebody and let them walk mm-hmm. away with it and they can see nice. it, they can have yeah. it. I definitely feel uncomfortable trying to um, sell people in that moment that they mm-hmm. came out of their float and they're just feeling great. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't love... 
um, you know, hitting them up for the next business. I, I try to not be too salesy about it and just let them enjoy the moment. Yeah. And with now when I can give them the card about the membership, they can yeah. walk away with it and they know I've told them I still have people who will buy a full price float. They don't want to commit to the membership. No problem. I'll take the full price money too. Sure. Yeah. It's I, really I interesting. Say, go ahead. Go ahead. Dylan. No, you go ahead, Kim. You go ahead. I <laughs> never had return guests paying full price, like pre pandemic. It was the strangest thing that all of a sudden we've seen an increase in our, and part of it I'm sure is just also in our maturity level. You know, we're coming up on four years now and we actually have people who are returning guests and they are, actually paying you know market rate and they're not even questioning it at all and <laughs> like like wow what because we always had people in our intro pack to our membership like that was sure. just pretty much it or they'd come in on gift cards um and now we've suddenly got a lot of folks who are just coming in and they have no problems paying the, the full price so yeah we're still going for those memberships though <laughs> yeah. dylan have you done a have you done a like a campaign or anything since the since the pandemic had started and you had to shut down and reopened or you no, haven't done and, any drives that, or anything like that? No, that's what we're gearing up for right now. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is just membership awareness, right? Just like more posts that involve it. I, I've actually just, just today I've been adding things into the queue of, of my mindful solutions uh, calendar to um, when, when Kim doesn't have a social media piece already there, I'm throwing in a, uh, my own and, and trying to keep it full um, and I just want to occasionally mention our membership and then I want to have a sale and I want, we're going to do a price increase. Like we, we have to, like we've noticed the cost just like everybody else. Inflation has been hitting us. I guess that's a whole nother episode of, of inflation, but, um, yeah, we, we felt it and, uh, we have to do a price increase and, um, part of that will be membership prices increasing as well, which is a great time to, have a quote unquote sale, which is this is your last chance to get it at this price before the price increases. We'll never raise your price or at least it locks you in for a year or two, whatever. But, you know, lock you in, uh, create that FOMO and just the honest to God, good, uh, best price, you know. Um, and we still have people who when we initially had our um, uh, membership like initial membership sale right out of the gate. It was so dirt cheap and we still have people on that. And I'm sure we like lose money when they float with us, yeah. but you know what? Good for them for staying with it. They've been floating this whole time with our guaranteed body in our float tank, which is super cool. And I, I love it. But anyway, um, so that there'll be a little bit of FOMO there and we'll, we'll have a, we'll drive the sales and, and all that. And I want to get back up to pre pandemic numbers for sure. Like that, uh, at, at the least, you know, like, but even when we were at the numbers where we were at previously, I don't feel like that was the ceiling. Like, I feel like we should just have all, I mean, not all, but like, this should be a member's mm -hmm. facility, you know, like that's what should be driving this business. Um, and like I said, that then gives us a sense of security throughout the year. That is, I mean, yeah, helps us it, sleep it, at night. <laughs> It definitely does. I mean, your memberships are kind of your base just to keep your business operating. And then, yeah. you know, everything else is, it, it, it can be icing on the cake. It might also be, you know, part of the rest of the cake, you know, finishing that For us, it is. Yeah it's, yeah. it's it's a huge piece of the business that um, I don't know, like, without the memberships, like, how comfortable I would feel. But that's mm -hmm. just such a, a huge piece of it and helping everybody to, to get comfortable. So, like, what do you guys say um, what is your spiel for mentioning the, the memberships? I think we've talked about it before, but it, I, I always love just to hear sure. maybe if you've tweaked or changed anything. I think Drew's kind of shared his. <laughs> just mm -hmm. sneakily sliding a card across mm -hmm. the table while looking in the other direction. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you the biggest thing that I try to say is that it's the best value. If you want to do yeah, this sure. regularly or consistently, this is the best value. I never say it's the cheapest because I don't think anything in there is nice. cheap. So mm -hmm. I nice. try to just say... Your best value will be this. And yeah. um, we do have packages. And if you only float once a month or once a year, rather, because you get stressed out and really need it and you think of us, that's awesome, too. So, yeah. you know, I'm not really pushy about any of it. I like that. I, I want to, um, at the next team meeting, use the word value instead of price. That's great. Mm -hmm. And certainly not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very good call. The best value. 
Um, yeah. So, so our our style has always been bring somebody into the starter pack before going into membership. Um, I'll talk about our membership style in a minute. That's the last thing I want to talk about. But um, I mean, the last I do want to talk about it. I want it to be the final thing we talk about. Not God. That's the last thing I want to talk about. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we. Um, we want to make sure that you, you have a rhythm, that you like this before you sign up for a membership. It's kind of been our philosophy in the past. And, and again, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, just so you know, uh, if you're interested in floating again, this is the best uh, price. Now I'm, now I'm confused on the verbiage that we use because uh, Drew's was, was better. But, um, but this is the best <laughs> value for floating, the best price that, that we can offer for floating. I, that's not how I say it. Now I'm up in my head. How about you, Kim? <laughs> Well, so, you know, we do the same thing of really trying to keep people on the intro pack um, where ours is you buy your first two, you get your third one for free. And so we always say it that way that, you know, they know that you're paying for your first two and we give you your third one for free. They have three months to use those. And so on that third visit, they're coming out. They haven't paid anything. They don't have to pay us that day. And we usually just say, you know, if this is something you want to continue, we have a membership program that's going to give you the best deals. Um, we really try to take care of our members with some extra things throughout the year as well. If you're interested in it, here's the information. You can take it or I can tell you about it now. Um, and if not, you can also just pop in and see us when you feel like it. You know, and cool. that tends to give people like, oh, okay. And then they can, you know, pull up. We've got our pricing sheet. Um, I do want to talk a little bit more. I want to update our pricing sheet rather than just the actual bones of the, the membership structure, but to also talk about like why it's important for that ongoing because we don't talk about that right now. Right now, it's really just here's what you get. Here's how much it costs. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about like why that's an important piece of committing to self-care and all of that. Nice. Um, Tell the but it's, story. Got it. Yes. yes. And, no, that's great. I love it. Yeah, and, and that really helps people. Sometimes people will just politely take it and say, okay, thanks, sure. and you yeah. know, go on their way. That's fine. But we also, whatever that, uh, when they're on, they have one visit left on their pass, we send an email that says, you know, hey, you're invited to learn more about this program. Let me tell you about it. And that's where we do talk about some of that self-care commitment and those sorts of yeah, things in good. the email. So That's good. So we hit them in a couple of different points. Um, just a little bit of a soft sale. And then after that, though, we're not, we're not pushy about it. We're not going to keep following up. We're not going to keep texting you anything. It's just, here's the deal. We'd love it if you can join us and we understand if you can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. That's cool. It, hitting them through the email too. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty grand. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot. I want to talk about membership styles. This is something that has, I guess it's really a, a story as old as time of the membership styles. I, I know, at the very beginning of the podcast, we had some pretty wild um, membership ideas of how people were um, finding the best way to, I don't know, generate revenue, but also generate value for their clients. And um, we did what we thought was pretty standard, which is I think we had two floats, four floats, and eight float memberships. And I, actually, we had a single float as well. Um, so we had all these different memberships, and it, and it made sense. Like, the more you float, the more you should save. So... You know, if you're if you're floating eight times a month, you should pay pay a lot less per float than the person who's floating twice a month or once a month. So, um, and our one float a month membership, I think, required a six month commitment that we wouldn't hold people to, but it was in the text and um, worked out fine. Um, we switched to a single membership. So one simple membership is what we call it. Um, I believe it's fifty nine dollars a month, and then any follow up floats are forty nine dollars a month. That's it. Um, you do get 25% off massage as well. Anybody else who shows up at the same time gets a $49 float as well. So you can bring friends for, for discount. Um, that seems simple. It seems to eliminate a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. um, I really like it. Uh, with that being said, I want to bounce it off of, of you guys and, and hear your input on what's right or what's wrong about that. What do you do, Drew? Drew's got a... Dirty smirk on his face. What is that? <laughs> no, because I'm I'm doing basically the same thing. I've had the same thing since the beginning, and I think I had decided on it. You know, after talking with you, Dylan, I have one price. You get a float when you sign up. It's forty nine dollars. You float any other time. It's forty nine dollars. You can bring guests. Forty nine dollars. I'll give you a free float during your birthday month. And um, shoot, so we're just in the echo chamber. <laughs> yeah, right now. So it probably will be the contrast. But yeah, I I do very simple. I've always had very simple three choices 
that's it. You four or more floats, I'll do fifty dollars a piece if you want to buy ten of them. Um, oh, I okay. don't. Yeah, the I get choice paralysis when I see a menu with right, too much right. on it. So choice paralysis. I, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I it gets to me when I'm at other places and my ADHD kicks in and I'm like, ah, oh, one of everything. I don't know. I can't decide, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I try to keep it simple. That's always been my, yeah. my motto cool. and it seems to work. So Kim, yeah. what do you, what do you do? Something different? Ours is a little different because we have other services involved. So, um, because we have the salt cave, um, and we also offer infrared therapy, um, and the infrared therapy is just resting on an infrared mat. And so it's not something that we can have multiple people at once. It's one person at a time. But um, so we changed our structure. It used to be we used to have a float membership, a salt cave membership, or a combo membership. And um, people could not exchange those credits, though. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we would have people who would be like, you know, I have 12 credits for the salt cave, but I really want to float. Can I switch yeah. those out? And like functionally, we couldn't really do that. So we decided to change our entire structure. And so we switched it to the Flex membership. And the Flex gives you credits that you can use towards our services. And you pick how many credits a month you want. You can pick two credits, three credits, or four uh, four credits a month. And so a float costs two credits, but Salt Cave and Infrared each cost one. Yeah. And so when we're talking to people about the membership, they're like, I want to do the membership. And I just don't know which one. And that's when we can ask like, what service do you, do you see yourself using all of the services or any particular one? Do you want to share that membership with anybody else or not? And then those answers can tell us if they should get the flex two, three, or four. Um, and then we let people switch back and forth. You know, if they want to share the flex four with a a spouse for a while and the spouse doesn't want to come anymore, we'll let them downgrade to a two or, you know, whatever that is. Um, but we do a lot of the same perks that you offer, Drew. We do the free, um, we give two credits during your birthday month, so you can use that however you want. Nice. Um, we, our floats are a standard of 75 minutes, and so we allow them to upgrade to 90 minutes at no extra cost. Uh, we also do add-ons. So if you're in the salt cave and you want to add an infrared therapy mat, you get that at a discounted rate versus what the public pays. Um, and then we do a product of the month. So our product of the month, they save anywhere between 10 and 25% on the product of the month as well. And so, you know, we layer Mm -hmm. on all of those added benefits. And then we do all kinds of fun stuff for our members. And, you know, if you're a member and there's nobody floating after you, you know, we'll try to extend your float if you want even Mm -hmm. more time. Or um, we give away, you know, extra coffee mugs that are laying around or whatever that kind of stuff (laughs) is. So, like, we just try to, you know, sprinkle in a little bit of kindness and make somebody's day when we can. So, yeah. So you don't use Helm. I'm curious how the credit system right. works in your system. Mm-hmm. Basically, for every appointment, um, we tell it how many session credits it uses. And um, we wanted to set it up in the beginning. We missed that part in the beginning. And we also thought it was really confusing for a new person to buy a pass that said it's valid for two session credits. But that's only one float. And so yeah. we've kept it pretty simple for our single passes. And it's just the membership where we can actually have those conversations oh, with people okay. um, and say a float costs two credits and then, but it is, you know, everything else. But it's it is built based. into your scheduling software yeah. that it can handle yeah. credits. Okay. Yeah, it's all built in um, very, very simply. You know, all of that's we don't have to think hard on it at all. So, cool. That I mean, yeah. so I was just doing a consult today. And mm-hmm. one of the things was when you have massage and you have floating, even if you want one simple membership, then mm-hmm. it, all of a sudden it's it's broken it's up, not. and you need to. Yeah, it's not yeah. so simple, yeah. But that's really solved by the credits yeah. uh, idea. That's really cool. Exactly, and you know we let them roll over for two years. People can share their credits if they want to. Um, so we try to be pretty flexible on as much as we can, and then they get discounts. Like if they only say they signed up for the two, but they decide this month they want to float an extra time, they get the same discounted rate again, and just nice. buy another pack of credits. Basically, Perfect. is kind of how we say it. So. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, because um, I know this was just a quick, quick, cozy fireside chat, um, mm-hmm. I have a kind of, uh, so speaking of the consult, um, one of the questions brought up uh, today was about um, expiration dates and where they're at, they can't do, well, they basically can't do expiration dates. They won't be um, for, for good reason. And I remember you had the coolest genius workaround for expiries. And I'm curious if you can mm-hmm. share that again, because I couldn't, couldn't quite think of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most of the time, the, the law is around expiration dates on gift cards. Mm-hmm. They're typically, most states don't have expiration laws about 
service credits or about passes or things like that. And okay. so our gift cards are valid for five years. Once you purchase that, uh, you use that gift card to purchase a pass, that pass is valid for two years. Um, and we just decided on two years just as our own kind of limit. We give you plenty of time. Okay. You should be able to use things <laughs> in two years. Yeah. Um, but that's also not, you know, we're reducing a little bit of that liability because I love the idea of no expiration date. But if I ever want to sell my business, that is going oh, right. to be such a risky thing to have hanging over our heads. Right. Um, and and we want people to use the service. It's not just that. Like, we really want mm-hmm. people to use the service. And sometimes you have to put a hard stop on things mm-hmm. to motivate people to come in yep. and do it. And um, so, you know, you just look into your state laws and see if there's anything around um, expiration dates for actual service passes. Most don't have it. Um, where gift cards you do. So, Can I jump in on something that you just made me think of, I'm sorry. Um, the um, membership, something that I do that I think is important so you don't run into trouble later is I will cancel people's memberships on my own if I see that they have too many mm. floats built up. Mm. I'm usually around three. If I see three with no appointment, wow. huh? I'll yeah. stop their membership until they catch up. And I'll have that mm-hmm. conversation with them because – I don't want to run into a problem where someone had 10 or 12 floats that they've been paying for. And then they say, Mm -hmm. what the heck? I want my money back. I haven't been there in a year. Mm -hmm. You keep charging me. And Mm -hmm. I've heard those stories have happened. So, um, we send emails and, and we, we touch base with people. Like I'm always watching that though, Drew. And it's one of those like, uh, should we, shouldn't we, should we, shouldn't we? And I go look to see if they've opened our emails. And if they've opened our emails, because we send an email every time mm. their membership renews, if they've been opening our communications, they know and they're making the choice to stay with us. If they haven't, then I'm going to pick up the phone and call them, send them a note in the mail, something. Um, Kim, use but, that tech. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah you know, that's next level and, customer service. Yeah. I just <laughs> I just turn it off, make a note in the account and don't say anything. And if I bump into them again, I'm like, oh yeah, I do that. Yeah, but I'm, awesome. I'm looking at our memberships and trying to see, like, are they actually coming in? How many credits do they have? And, um, you know, we had one woman who was one of our – actually, she signed it before we ever actually opened. She signed it for our membership whenever she saw that she could book online. Um, she had never been in. She just wanted to support us, and it was the sweetest thing. She eventually did get to come in and start floating with us for a little while, but um, she wanted to just keep her membership going during COVID. Um, I think she just left her house for the first time last week. And, you know, we did pause her membership and she was like, no, 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 no. I want to support you guys. Keep it going. And we're like, no, no, I appreciate that. But (laughs) you have like a hundred floats now because, I mean, she's been with us for years. Um, And like now they're going to start expiring and that makes me feel like a jerk and I don't want to do that. So (laughs) that's a sweet story. That's pretty cute. I like it. She's super sweet. (laughs) Anything you want to leave with our audiences, guys, before we close? Drew, gosh, fired up now. You, memberships. You got a lot to say? Memberships are awesome. Love them. Wow. Wow. We need, we need somebody to splice together all of Drew's opinions yeah. on memberships over the years. I, love it. If, I know. I, mail I, thank I, you cards. It sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah, thank again, you Kim? cards. Mail awesome. thank you cards. Yeah. Um, and yeah. mail thank you cards. It's something that I did for a while, and then I just sort of fell off the wagon. Um, and I've asked one of our employees to to handle that, and she's done a great job. She gets everybody – she writes out the cards for us, gets everybody in the shop to sign it. Um, we send them little stickers or whatever we've got. And um, so every two weeks, we're sending um, thank you cards and just welcome to, to all of our members. To new, so, new members. To newbies. Yep. Anybody who, wow. show, who signs cool. up during that time. Yeah. Dope. And then – I also am going to be adding in another layer. So, Roya, if you're listening, get ready. Um, once somebody has been a member for a year, we want to send another little thank you, like, you know, just for staying with us that long and for two years and so on. So when we're hitting those anniversaries for people. Next level customer service. Next I love it. Mother Uckin' level, man. Damn. Damn. I aspire to do that. <laughs> and when it, can I play Mindful Solutions to... Yeah. To, to do that for us, <laughs> Char- charge yeah, a lot to do that, Kim. <laughs> yeah, or just Why like bare I... bones, whichever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it. all right. We gotta, we gotta put a pin in it, guys. We yeah. got to. Um, <laughs> wow, truth is dancing. If you guys aren't watching the video versions, um, you're missing you out occasionally. To. Occasionally. 
<laughs> uh, you're, you'll see um, Drew's dear chandelier um, in the background. Or as chandelier. Reba said off mic, a chandelier, which was, wow, real high that point. <laughs> That's next that level. <laughs> yeah, that's truly <laughs> next level. Um, all right, let's see here. Let's wrap it up. Thank you guys for co-hosting. Thanks for thanks for another cozy podcast. And um, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us each and every week. It's a pleasure to have you. It really, truly is. I, I still sometimes I can't believe that we're still podcasting. It's, it's just crazy. And that people listen. I really think something's wrong with my brain. Like, I can't. I literally cannot picture people listening. I can look at the numbers. I can see that people do. Um, and I have some weird thing where I, I can't visualize it or, or actually, like, if somebody tells me they listen to it, I'm like, cool, that's exciting. And it doesn't actually enter my brain. It's, it probably comes across as really insulting. But um, it, it does mean I don't get stage fright when doing this uh, right. because I feel like I'm just talking with you guys, which is nice. Um, so I got that going for me. So thank you, listeners. Um, and uh, thanks for supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for supporting our sponsors. Truly appreciate that as well. Um, yeah, Helmbot, we we dig Helmbot. They 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 rock hard. Uh, isopod i dash s o p o d isopod dot com. Float tanks as well. Built like beasts. And Mindful Solutions, that's with two L's, Mindful.Solutions. That's who the Float Shop uses for their social media. I believe Gloria, all their business locations are using Kim as well. Um, she's got a team of people to take care of your social media needs and more. Go ahead and get in contact with her, and she can tell you what she can do for you. And, gosh, Olga, thanks for producing the show. Truly appreciate it, um, even when a guest doesn't show up. And I think that's about it. Uh, thanks, <laughs> as always. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, no, I did that again.